Hello? Hello. Oh yeah, it's definitely showing <laughs> multiple classic rose VODs now. <laughs> How many VODs do we have? <laughs> I haven't looked. How many do we have? It's got three right now. Um, okay. We may add more. I don't know. I was, I was hoping that each of those individual little like five second connects and disconnects weren't creating <laughs> new VODs. Um, I'm assuming that they they wouldn't do that, but I was, wasn't sure. Um, <laughs> Video. Uh, what we got? <laughs> oh, wait, is that like a thirty-second long one? Right there? I'll That's go back. Minutes, I think. No, there's yeah, there's a there's a fifty-three minute one, there's a thirty-second one, and there's a thirty-one minute one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back and watch those later, and we'll. And I'll probably delete that 30 second one because I don't think hey, anybody is interested in that. You gotta delete them, man, because the other groups are gonna see that and be like, damn, Classic Crows is played so many times and we only get to play once a week. <laughs> man, there's a Christmas event. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll forget about it by then. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. I think everything is stable. So. Oh my god, that 30 second one is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. It's so out of context. It has our voices in it, but it has your DM screen. Wait, I gotta listen to this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are back um, after just every every possible technical difficulty was hitting us tonight. Um, seems like things are working. Um. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'll probably clean those up a bit uh, so that we don't have random 30 second videos. Um, but, uh, I'll, I'll watch those back later. All right. Uh, if you guys are okay to keep going, then I guess we can keep going. Yeah, I didn't move. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just on the way back to the dorm for Amelia's cram stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm echoing. Sorry, chat. I don't know why it unmuted that mic. It shouldn't have, but it did. All right. Back in the swing of things. And the best part is roll 20 no longer lagging. All it took was <laughs> everything else to go wrong. Oh. Thank God. Unmuted there too. Okay, there we go. Now everything's back to normal. So, you return to the dormitory after a day of classes. Um, and after a bit of waiting, where'd she go? Uh, Amelia comes downstairs and begins to uh, set up her her notes. She's got like a uh, a massive stack of papers, and she uh, plops them down on the desk, on the table, and uh, begins to sort through them. I'm going to look at all the papers and my eyes are going to go wide 
and I'm going to like pretend to make a barfing sound at the side of the papers before I come and sit. I'm extra. <laughs> Dilly, are you feeling well? I I I don't I don't know what's overcome me. <laughs> hmm. If you have a sickness, you should probably speak to Dallas. She might have something that could remedy that. Oh yeah, I think I might do that. And he's gonna get up and slowly walk away. Um, <laughs> Amelia kind of calls it after you. Oh, I'm, I hope you're feeling better soon. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, 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 I hope so too. As he like picks up the f not, he didn't really have anything in front of him. He just pretends to shuffle some papers around. Probably took Croak's papers, shuffled them around, gave them back to what? Croak, and then walk <laughs> walked <laughs> <them> out. <laughs> uh, okay, he does seem a bit strange. I hope he's feeling well. He didn't know he was so allergic to schoolwork. A real allergy, guys. Out of character, totally understand. <laughs> um, Amelia spent some time explaining uh, the various piles of paper that she's handed you. Um, she has them sort of separated out into um, each of the uh, schools of magic, um, except for Croaks, whose are now out of order. He's busy trying to catch up and find <laughs> which page that she's on. Um, and she says, uh, well, I think let's start at the beginning with ab abjuration. Um, and she begins to kind of uh, sort through each of the individual uh, uh, pages on each of them. There's sort of an introduction uh, that lists off in order um, the things that were covered in the classes you missed. Uh, sort of like a, a table of contents. And then uh, from there she goes through. Uh, spends about an hour and a bit. Um, explaining each of the concepts that were talked about in those classes. And. Uh, gives you time to uh, ask questions and. Explains. making a note of something sorry you good yeah croaks uh intently paying attention um she talks pretty fast and uh she uh doesn't have like a ton of experience in teaching but um she's relatively patient in answering your questions and makes sure that everybody understands it before she moves on so although it is a bit of a hurried explanation you do get a decent sense of what happened in the the weeks of abjuration that you missed uh, she does seem to be pretty passionate about this particular school i just imagine like yo asking the same question twice mm -hmm. like maybe not in a row but over a certain amount of time <laughs> for sure um and, and gilly are you heading to dallas then yeah all right then let's go i'm I'm allergic to schoolwork, therefore I need to go. <laughs> um, so while you guys are doing your little lessons, uh, Gilly heads on over to the, the school nurse, if you will, at Dallas and her little hut in Sundial Square. Uh, the door is closed, but um, there's a light on inside. I'm going to knock on it before walking in to be polite now you hear a um a voice that just says oh uh, come in and um inside you can see dallas uh, just at work at work as she always is uh, grinding various ingredients 
Um, and she says, Ah, uh, Gilly, is this about um, the things that you left with me before, or is it something else? Yeah, yeah, and I also wanted to know a little bit more about um, School of Titus. You see, when I look at schoolwork, I just get nauseated, and then I can't concentrate. So I was wondering if you had something for that, too. <laughs> Um, well, uh, I do know a couple herbal remedies for uh, nausea, but I've, I've never seen schoolwork bring about a uh, bout of nausea. Are you sure it's not just uh, anxiety of some sort? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's, I don't know if it's anxiety. He, like, looks down, <laughs> realizing how ridiculous he sounds before he goes yeah and i was just wondering um how your analyzation of those mushrooms have gone hmm. yes i wanted to speak with you about that um i'll get you a uh anti-nausea remedy before you go oh thank you thank you and he's she... not actually nauseous but he'll take it she begins to sift through things looking for the uh the pouches that you left with her uh, and when she finds them she uh brings them back over and shows them to you um she i believe let you just keep uh the the ones that were just like your kind of harmless garden variety plants um but she held on to the myconid ones um, well he still has them he he just gave her some of them all right you gave her some of them uh, so she points out the yeah. um the uh, myconid uh, shrieker, the small little mushrooms that you find, um, and says, well, from what I can tell, this one appears to have uh, some sort of hypnotic effect. I imagine... Oh, sweet. Really? And he's would... like, wait wait a moment. So he takes his satchel, opens it up, and then he's going to write notes. Uh, yes, from what I can tell, it seems to induce a, a mild trance, from what I can see. Sweet! Will it kill me? Mm, I don't believe so. Um, I don't see anything that would indicate that it has too much of a uh, hazard to your health, but um, I suppose it depends on where you're uh, going into a trance. Good point. So, uh, of course, exercise caution. Okay. Um, and then she moves on to the next one. She points out the uh, the myconid wizard flesh uh, and says, "This one, from what I can tell, appears to be uh, hallucinogenic in nature." Um, it seems to induce illusions but uh, only only the person who has uh, been exposed to it experiences will I experience ego death on it mm, I don't seem to see anything that would indicate that but I suppose it's always possible okay And uh, this last one, this last one, uh, well, actually, there's two more. Um, she says, uh, this one over here, the uh, pointing at the Meganid bruiser um, flesh, and says, uh, this one I'm not entirely sure about. I haven't seen anything quite like it in any sort of fungal form, but it does seem similar to uh, plants that, uh, induce emotional responses um, particularly plants that tend to uh, rile up the person who takes them uh, enrage them, anger them it seems similar in nature to that from what I can tell although I, I can't say I've seen this particular type of mushroom before okay so that one doesn't sound fun I, I suppose not And uh, this last one, she points out the uh, 
the sample that you took from the large uh, mushrooms in the uh, dig site B. And says, uh, this one, I'm quite unsure of. Uh, I wasn't able to pinpoint anything in particular about its uh, its makeup and what effects it may have. Uh, so I suppose it's quite possible that it has no effect at all, but it would have to be tested on a person to be sure of that. Well, I can try it and chill in here if you don't mind. <laughs> Um, I would prefer not to have experiments on the students be done in my office. I don't suppose that the headmaster would look too fondly on that sort of activity. Um, but I can, I can keep inspecting it and see if I find something else out about it if you'd like. But for the time being, I, I'm really not sure. I'm, uh, I'm not your mother, and I can't stop you from doing anything, but um, I would advise you to exercise caution with all of these. Mm, okay. And then he is like, huh, he's got to figure out a way to waste the rest of the afternoon so he doesn't go back to have to study. He's going to feel guilty if he goes back and doesn't. And then um, he's gonna say, "Oh wait, do you need um, do you have need any help around here?" Uh, not at the moment. Um, but actually, now that you mention, I believe, uh, Professor Hibiske was looking for people to assist her with preparing for a lesson later in the week. Oh, sweet! I'll go do that. Thank you. Yep, she should be at the greenhouse as usual. Okay, and if um, there's anything that you need, please let me know. Thank course, you so much. Course. I'll be bringing you more stuff as I find it. More Happy to stuff. help. And he's gonna... Is she giving back the samples that she was looking at minus the large mushrooms? Yeah, she gave you back the ones that she uh, kind of already understood. Um, and then she held on to the sample of the, uh, the larger mushroom because she wanted to continue to take a look at it. Okay, that's fine. So he carefully puts them back into their little bags before leaving to the greenhouse. Who needs to study when you have plants? <laughs> yeah, professional at playing hooky. <laughs> um, yeah, so you head on back. Uh, the school hasn't quite closed up because it's just the afternoon, not quite uh, nighttime yet. Okay, so I guess I'll I'll just help with whatever they're doing while they go back. We go back to the school. Okay. Yeah. Oh, a new student. Wait, what's her name first? Um. Yeah, I was gonna do a little thing here. Okay. Um. So you you approach the uh, the greenhouse, and you can see Professor Hibiscay in there. Um. And another student who you haven't really talked to before, you, you bumped into her maybe, or just walked past her in the halls, but um, you were never really introduced to her. Um, and Professor Biscay kind of looks up and says, uh, can I help you, Gilly? Yeah, I was, I heard from uh, Dallas that you were looking for some students to help out around the greenhouse, and I was wondering if you needed any help. Ah, I, actually, yes. Um, Lockney here was helping me out a little bit um, after she uh, got in a little bit of trouble in class. Um, so this is her little punishment. But uh, I'd happy be happy to uh, have a little bit of extra help preparing for my next lesson. Sweet. What do you want me to do? Uh, well, we just received a new shipment of uh, buds to be planted. Um, and I'd like them to be at least partially grown by the time we do a lesson on it so that you can experience um, experience more of the plant than just the uh, planting phase. So I'm actually mixing up some fertilizer for this particular type of plant. Um, so if the two of you could assist me in um, mixing up the fertilizer. 
uh, that would be very helpful as it uh, tends to take a bit of a while uh, when you're uh, doing it by yourself. Um, yes. She has gathered around her like a bunch of uh, sacks of uh, various sizes. Um, she kind of hauls them up onto the table to show you them. And he, and, um, he takes out... A, apparently he really likes plants, and I didn't know this before. And so he um, kind of takes note of like the type of fertilizer she's using. And then watches closely as she does her thing with the plants. The um, she launches into an explanation of the fertilizer. Um, it's a lot more complicated than uh, anything you've heard before in regards to gardening. Um, she has a bunch of different ingredients. She goes through them all. She says, this here is the soil, and uh, we have some manure here as well. Uh, we add a, t a little bit of, uh, of ash. Um, some kelp is uh, ground up and mixed in. And um, these mushrooms here are going to be uh, mashed into a paste and then added to the fertilizer. And then finally, uh, we also add some powdered blood that I have uh, got from a local farmer from their livestock. Um, so she spends some time showing you the various ratios that it needs to be mixed in. Um, and uh, Lockney seems to sort of be following along, um, but you can tell that she's kind of a little lost. Um, so Gilly, if you can make an int check for me to see how well you follow this. Okay. I did not follow it. I got a six. All right. Um, let me... But you know what? I can at least draw pictures of what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you take some notes, but um, you're not quite sure that you got it all the way. Um, and uh, Lockney seems to be in a similar situation. And uh, after finally finishing um, <laughs> crayon time... <laughs> Uh, after finishing her explanation, she says, uh, I'll leave you to that then, uh, as I have some other things I need to prepare as well. Um, are you okay to start then? Can you just check my um, proportions? And he has like a little piece of paper with like the different um, ingredients and then like a drawing that kind of represents the amount that he thinks it's supposed to be um she gives it a scan but she seems like she's in a hurry and kind of busy um so you're not sure how thoroughly she checked it but she does scan it over quick and say uh, yeah that seems fine so he's like okay and he is going to go around and um, i guess so uh, yeah the ingredients are kind of all gathered in here um, and, uh, Lockney, uh, looks at you as you approach her and says, you're volunteering for this. Yeah, it's better than doing schoolwork. This isn't in schoolwork? In the same thing? Um, no, because this is physical labor. It requires very little brain power, whereas memorizing stuff requires brain power. I guess. I just don't like getting all sweaty. Eh. He kind of shrugs after thinking about the the path below, and he was like, it's, it's, it's not too bad. I guess. At least I got someone to talk to. But I'd much rather be uh, brewing up potions, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, I was wondering later. I've got this um, shrieker flesh that apparently puts you in a mild trance. And it's not a hazard to health if you want to try it later. Um, That sounds interesting, actually. Uh, much more interesting than this. Uh, sure. I won't, and then he goes, 
I wonder how much work we would get done if we took it now, or if we should wait and get some work done before trying it. Um, that would certainly make this much more interesting. Hmm. Unfortunately, I don't know how much we're supposed to take. But okay. And he takes a, the little baggie and he gives her a little bit and he takes a little bit and he's like, I guess we should try it and then see how much work we get done. All right. Let's go for it. Yay. And he just um, kind of gulps his down. Um, she sort of watches you for a sec and then as uh, seeing that you kind of confidently gulp it down, she, uh, she does so as well. All right. Let's get some work done. Or uh, not. <laughs> the two of you get off to work um, for a couple minutes. Um, and then eventually you start to feel um, a little lightheaded. And um, before you know it, um, it's an hour later. Oh, shit. Um, and, uh, you're still sitting here. Um, there's sort of soil everywhere, um, as you guys have been working. Did uh, we get anything done? There is several little, um, uh, pots that are a mix of something, as you can see. Um, so you did get some work done. Uh, and you can see that she's sort of coming down off of her high, too. Um, uh, she kind of blinks and looks at you like, that was that was intense. Yeah, I, w I totally wasn't expecting that. Um, And he, like, goes over, grabs a broom, and then starts to sweep stuff up to start. We should get to work quickly. <laughs> um, what was the teacher doing? <laughs> doing like just the tea, the, while you guys were working uh she just kind of left you guys to mix the fertilizer and she went out to go um do her own thing uh so she actually left the greenhouse for a few for uh that time um but uh you guys did uh, spend you guys did spend the hour um being relatively productive um you're not entirely sure of the quality of that work as uh you're in a bit of a trance um and the time seemed to pass by very quickly to you um, but before you know it, you have um, a bunch of different pots in front of you that all contain some sort of mixture of soil and the, uh, the other ingredients. I think we followed the pictures. Uh, yeah, seems like it to me. I mean, I wasn't really following her uh, explanation, but um, looks right to me, right? Can't be that bad. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Do you want to get high later? Mm, yeah, with the same one, or you got something else? Um, yeah, probably the same one. I'm. I got another one called Wizard Flesh, but I think that um, I don't know if that'd be a good idea. But maybe, maybe like during a weekend. Yeah, sounds interesting. A... Yeah. Yeah, I like uh. I like potions and stuff, and uh, I like all their different effects, and, you know, this is a pretty similar thing, so. Sweet. If you're um, looking to uh, test out some uh, ingredients, then uh, I'll be happy to help. And he's, he, like, blushes a little bit, and he's like, okay, okay. Uh, she holds out her hand and says, uh, Lokni Striga, by the way. I don't think I got your full name. Oh, my name's... Uh, well, I go by Gilly. I don't really use my full name. Uh, well, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you too, Lockney. And he... he um, I guess is like finishing cleaning the area. Uh, yeah, she helps you kind of tidy up. There's yeah. kind of soil strewn along the ground. Um... But you uh, managed to clean most of it up. Uh, and then before long, you can see uh, Professor Hibiscus through the windows of the greenhouse, uh, walking around back to the door. Um, and says, uh, 
Oi, yeah. Professor, and welcome back. Did you two uh, get along all right then? Yeah, I, I think we we did it. Uh, she kind of inspects the pots and says, uh, seems like you got enough done. Uh, that should be good for the next lesson. Cool, I'm going to head back to the dorms, I guess. All right, uh, thanks for your help, you two. Um, Lockney, you're off the hook for now. Uh, try to behave a bit better in class from now on. And uh, Lockney goes, yeah, oh, all right, Professor. Um, she kind of follows you out. And then I guess as they're walking, Gilly's just going to tell her more about the wizard. The wizard flesh and the bruiser. But he's not thinking about doing the bruiser because he doesn't really want to get angry. Um, yeah, she's following what you say pretty interestedly. Um, she definitely seems interested in like various uh, ingredients and their effects and how it um, alters people. Uh, she seems yeah. to really have quite a passion for potions. He uh, has a passion for plants, so I guess. Yeah, there's works. some uh, there's some common ground between the two. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Um, but she actually walks back to the dormitories too with you, as um, she is also a first year. Okay. Uh, where the hell did she go? All right, one sec, I'll grab her. Uh, welcome back, Gilly. Are you feeling better? Yeah, yeah, I'm not feeling nauseous anymore. Oh, that's good to know. And this is Lockney. Uh, uh, greetings, Lockney. I'm nice to Pearl. meet you. <laughs> Salutes. Uh, oh. is, yeah. is this your friend, Gilly? Yeah, yeah, we just um, helped out Professor Hibiscus um, a bit. Oh, well, I thought you weren't feeling well. Yeah, yeah, I went and saw Dallas and got some nausea medicine. Oh, yeah, I forgot to do that, but she gives you um some leaves to be mixed into the tea to help your nausea. Yeah, he wasn't really nauseous, so... She so gave it to you anyway. Uh... Yeah, yeah, he, he probably kept it in his stash of stuff. Hmm, I see you, Gilly, so you were feeling well enough to go help Professor Hibisca, but not well enough to come back to your studies. You should really focus on your schoolwork, Gilly. It's very important. You should listen to your father, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, not, not Gilly's father. There you go. Well, Dad? Oh, sorry, sorry. You are the schedule okay. master. Have you transformed into Dan? Oh god, I, I think he has, kind of. I, I just get confused sometimes. Now. <laughs> it's alright, yo. I understand. Well, no, I don't understand your confusion, but I understand <laughs> that you get confused. And then Gilly's like, and that's yo, and that's Killian, and that's dad. <laughs> Uh, Lockney laughs. Uh, she like kind of leans back in her seat and kicks her feet up on the table, um, and then she kind of looks around and says, uh, "So what are we doing in here then?" We're studying. Mm, we are catching up on schoolwork because uh, while we were in the path below, a month had passed and we got quite behind. So mm, you're the lot that went up. missing, eh? Indeed. Yep. Yeah. You find lots of exciting stuff down there. Too much. Spiders. Kirk does like a thousand yard stare off onto the wall whenever Killian mentions spiders. <laughs> I found an antidote. An antidote? For... Yeah, he technically did. He picked up the venom so everyone could get unsick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lockney that. looks interested. You still got some of that venom on you? No, um, they had to use all of it to, so we'd all stop being sick, so. 
Damn, sounds Fortunately, interesting. You know that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe next time I'll keep an extra vial for you. Sounds like a good plan. I'd uh, definitely like to take a look at it. Oh, I do have a vial of the anti venom left. Oh, you yeah. used I, I was planning on saving it, but if you want to take a look. Mm, I won't use it. I'll just want to take a look at it. Sure. I'll hand it over. Uh, she spends now just, as you guys sit at this table, um, Amelia is con kind of continuing, trying to get everybody back on track um, after the interruption. Um, but Lockney seems kind of preoccupied. Just She's swishing it around in the vial and staring at it, holding it up to the light, inspecting its uh, various properties. But a uh, lot of you have been studying for quite a while now. Uh, so eventually it starts to roll around to the supper hour. Um, and as you're studying, you hear um, a voice from behind you who says, uh, All ready for dinner then, dearies? Yes. Yes, please. Uh, indeed. Uh, good, good. Then uh, if you uh, clear off the table, then I'll bring dinner over uh, in just a moment. Certainly. Uh, Croak will stand up and just gather his notes and just try to organize everything a bit. Um, yeah, Amelia also helps uh, clean everything up and clear the table off for dinner. Uh, somebody roll a d100 and we'll find out. Ooh, who's gonna do it? Well, I, find uh, I did it last time, so someone else can. I'll do it. I forgot how to do rolls, though. Uh, you can do it on D&D Beyond or you can do it in Roll20, whichever one's easier for you. I did it. 63. 63. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Hearth and Home, this one's for you. Uh, sometimes when they're like really out there, I'll like um, remove them from the list eventually. But um, <laughs> I think I'll leave this one just because Hearth and Home. Here you go. Um, so she brings in a big platter eventually um, with some uh, steam rising off of it and places it in the center of the table and says, enjoy then. Uh, she's got a bunch of plates with her as well that she hands out. Uh, much appreciated, Miss Josephina. Yes, thank you, Miss Josephine. Huh? Is it Josephine or Josephina? I can't remember. Let me double check because I forget that too. <laughs> I think it's Josephine. It is. I was going to say Josephine, but then he said there you uh, go. Josephina. Oh, you were right. Oh, Loggers. Hey. <laughs> Good memory. <laughs> well, you are the schedule master. It's you guys are probably confused because I've probably called her Josephine several times. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Josephine, short for Josephine. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Just when you want to drop that extra syllable. <laughs> um. Mm. So she she places the platter in front of you, and it's still covered. Uh, Croak will eager eagerly remove the cover. Um. Underneath the, the cover is um. Uh, roasted giant centipede. No. Alien uh. just stands up from the table. Mm. <laughs> More bugs. Well. Where's Esther? Um, almost as if her name was called. Um, mm -hmm. Esther <laughs> pokes her head around the thing, uh, just kind of sniffing for food. And Gilly's like, it's your time, Croak. I believe uh, in you. Yes, it is. It is indeed time to eat. Um, Esther, we have and, some. And as, as, Croak is, as Croak is trying to say that, he, Gilly interrupts him and says, Croak had something he wanted to tell you, Esther. Oh, yeah. What's Worst that? Wing man ever. Uh, just that it was time for dinner. Mm, yeah, I'm what starving. Is uh, indeed, me as well. And uh, are, you, are you quickly... really gonna? Are you really gonna do this? Um, push him a little more, maybe. Hey, Esther, do you like dancing? Mm, can't say I got much experience there, so I don't know. Do you like partying? 
Uh, don't really do so, that back in my tribe either, so I don't really know. Food. We have feasts at my tribe. Yeah, yeah, you like yeah, yeah feasts. You like feasts. Hmm. Yeah, that's the best time of the year when we have our feasts. What's that? Oh, this is in person. What's the dance called again? Uh, it's the Winter Wind Festival, which is just the equivalent of Christmas. Oh, oh okay. So, what's your opinion on the Winter Wind Festival? Mm, I heard the teachers talking about it in class. There's, food. There's uh, food. There's food. Yeah, that was the part that interested me. Yeah. They said there was food. Your, do you have your eyes on anybody to go with? Mm. Enjoy a feast with? Mm. I mean, I like to enjoy a feast with anybody, but um, I guess... Um, and then get, the, she gets uncharacteristically quiet. Gilly kick throat. Oh, yeah, I guess they both kick kick throat. Uh, you just hear like an audible Clang. clanging of metal <laughs> up under the table. <laughs> Everybody at the table can hear that because it's metal. Uh, well, I guess there was one other thing uh, I had to mention uh, as well, Esther. Yeah. Um, I was informed that at the festival there would be a ball or dance, if you will. Mm -hmm. And while I am not a skilled dancer, uh, yeah, me I neither. would like, it, indeed, uh, I would like to offer uh, an invitation to you to accompany me to this ball. Yeah, I, I thought we were already going. Indeed, <laughs> we are. Uh, and then Gilly Kirk just exasperately like yeah. looks to Gilly and Gillian. He wants to go to the ball to dance with you and then eat some food. Mm, okay, I see. You. I see. Um, she kind of like you. she taps her nose and goes, "I get it. I get it." Indeed, Kirk will just nod <laughs> like a couple times. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Uh, wonderful. Well, I look forward to seeing you there. Um, perhaps we could meet up before we live and with, travel We together. live with her. Just go to her room. We'll pick you up at your at your room. Yeah, all right. In a month. <laughs> <laughs> we just gotta go back to the path alone for a day, and then we'll be good. <laughs> Um, by now, as you guys were kind of talking, Esther was grabbing food off the table, um, and she's she basically with her hands grabbed a huge chunk of the uh, the centipede, and um, is kind of breaking into its shell like it's lobster, um, but with her hands, and just taking a big bite to the flesh. Um, the uh, the centipede had um, uh, like butter to pour over it as well. Uh, it was crowned up. Yeah, Kirk just grabs it and kind of tries to like squeeze it to where it'll like come out one end, um, like through his auger. Um, yeah, the uh, once you kind of crack the shell, you can squeeze some of the uh, inside flesh out. Um, the taste itself is uh, a little bit like crab, a little bit like lobster. Hmm. Where are you going, Julian? It's delicious. Wow. I am not a big fan of bugs. She, uh, mm -hmm. Killian, I could always save you some in a napkin if you would like. No, no, it's it's okay, Croak. Thank you though. Just eat it all yourself. Take take my serving. Uh, much appreciated. <laughs> Hi, Miss Josephina. Oh, hello, so dear. Uh, can I help you? Hi. Uh, do you, you got any uh, bread? Um, yeah, we should have some around here. What about some cheese? Yep, we have some of that as well. Do you have any turkey? Mm, not at the moment. Okay, okay. I'll take the cheese and the bread. And she, can she like put it over the fire and make a grilled cheese? Uh, yeah, you can kind of toast it on the, uh, the hot stones by the fire. All right, Kelly and quickly puts a grilled cheese together. And the uh, yeah, the cheese begins to melt as you uh, lay it next to the 
the warm fire. Okay. And before long, you've uh, made sort of a, um, a medieval grilled cheese, if you will. Thank you, thank you, Miss Josephina. Uh, happy to help. Was the uh, centipede not to your liking, then? It's it's pretty scary looking. Mm, but don't yeah. worry, Esther Croak and everybody else is enjoying it. Well, that's good. Uh, it's a bit of an yeah. acquired taste, but um, I find that v most people exotic. tend to like it. Very exotic. Oh, a little bit, yeah. Glad you're branching out there, Josephina. And she just comes back with her grilled cheese at the table. All right. Uh, Killian returns to the room just holding a different meal. Also, out of character, I really want a grilled cheese now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Out of character, you don't want centipede? <laughs> You're right. I'll put that on the grilled cheese. like crab. <laughs> What do you think it actually tastes like? Jay mm. said it's like crab. So. Yeah, it's like crab. Right. I just sp I speak from That's my delicious. own personal experience of eating giant <laughs> centipedes. <laughs> I see. You gotta get the uh, the venom out first, or you'll be um, ending up like Hearth and Home with that. Man, mm. yeah, Canadians oh. eat some weird stuff. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about the uh, giant centipede harvest every year? It's a tradition. Oh, that's what that's what y'all do for y'all's Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Centipede. <laughs> the giant centipede harvest. Oh no. <laughs> I ate leftovers for four days. Nice. I'm planning on eating more leftovers after this. From the centipede hunt. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty gnarly. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Crook's gonna polish off his centipede and save a little bit in a napkin and just kind of tuck it away in his backpack. Alright. The, uh, the evening winds down and the food begins to dwindle. And, uh, some of the students excuse themselves. Yeah, uh, Crook will grab the plates as usual. Thank you, crew. Uh, indeed. There's no problem, yo. You uh, spend some time clearing the dishes. Uh, Josephine is grateful for your help. Crook will just nod at her as he uh, passes. Uh, well, I'll leave you two alone. Have a good night. Uh, thank you for the study session, Amelia, and good night, Esther. Uh, also, good night, Amelia. Uh, Amelia says, happy to help as she uh, continues up the stairs. Um, and Esther says, uh, good night, Alma Boy. Uh, good night. He'll give her a farewell salute. Um, the entire kind of dinner, uh, Gilly, Lockney has been kind of distracted, just inspecting that potion, um, uh, between mouthfuls of food. Um, did she eat the centipede? Yeah, she did. Uh, she did, kind of didn't even really notice what she was eating, she was just distractedly eating. Um, and but he... seeing that you're alone, uh, you, you, you can say what you want to say, go ahead. Oh, how are you enjoying the centipede? Uh, she looks down and goes, oh, that's what this was? Yeah. Hmm. Not too bad then, I guess. Expected it to be tougher. Yeah. It, it really wasn't too bad. I suppose, are you going to give that back to you? All right, I'll, I'll leave it with you then, and you can give it to uh, him. All right, you want to go to the da fall dance? I got to go tell Killian that I asked you. Oh, uh, all right. Um, I guess I don't have anyone else to go with. Sounds cool. interesting. Cool. Get high then. <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> it certainly sounds more exciting than uh, spending it the normal way. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'll see you then. Bye. Have a good night. So he's going to go to Killian and he's going to be like, Killian, meet me in my room. Uh, okay. Uh, Crook's going to knock on Windermere's door. Um, she opens the door and says, uh, Yes, uh, what is the uh, knocking on the door? Uh, apologies to interrupt your uh, w whatever you were doing. I uh, just noticed that you missed dinner, so I wanted to offer you some of the giant centipede that we ate, and it will uh, offer out the napkin with the centipede in it. Mm, uh, um, uh, yes, uh, thank you. I, sometimes I get uh, distracted. Uh, understood. I thought you may be busy with studies or uh, bonding with your new imp, was it? Uh, yes, imp. Uh, still don't have a name for him. Mm. Well, uh, if you're still looking for one, perhaps the group can consult together. I'm not sure if we could come up with anything good or not, but we'll try our best. Yes, uh, that would be great, actually. I'm uh, not too creative with the name. Hmm. Understood. Well, have a good night. You too. No, uh, he'll just nod and go back to his room. <coughs> and say a prayer to Hana. Alright, Gilly, Gilly. Oh. So Gilly goes through the whole day and then finishes with and then I asked her to the winter fall dance. And she wow. said yes. I thought we were going. I know, but Wow. She's kinda hot. It's fine. I was gonna replace you anyway too. Oh oh, but before you leave, he takes out a little bit of the shriekers and he just says do you want some of this and then he explains what it is oh yeah sure thanks yeah yeah of course i'm really sorry but um i'll help you catch someone's heart Aw, thanks i'll probably pick somebody from upstairs or something yeah yeah if you need a wingman let me know oh thanks gilly i'll tell i'll let you know when i go looking okay I can help. Aw, oh, thanks. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. <laughs> hey, I dumped you, but here's some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's here's your, uh, your consolation prize. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. Well played, Gilly. <laughs> Um, so you head to bed and drift off. Uh, the morning that follows is uh, your your standard morning. Uh, you go about your your business as usual. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, the only thing different about today, um, you seem to have a lecture in one of your classes, but um, you have transmutations class today. Um, and on your schedule, um, it says to uh, meet Professor Nightingale uh, in the square, in Sundial Square, for this class. OK. Yeah, so that's the only thing out of the ordinary about today. Uh, so you can go about, uh, I don't know if there's anything different in your morning schedule. But if not, then we can continue. Oh, you're just taking notes. Um, nope, Croak's just doing the typical morning bathroom. Uh, set a prayer to Morningstar before he left his room, and that's it. While grabbing some quick jerky. Um, while you guys do that, let me just do something in the background. So you guys can just say if there's anything interesting you want to do in the day. Kaylian's performance was a 23 today. <gasps> nice. Gilly is singing outside of her door this morning. Oh, hell yeah. He's embracing like it. Yeah. Uh, Croak doesn't realize it, but he looks down and he's apparently tapping his foot to the music. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, the, the song is quite nice today. Um, much better than it usually is. Uh, it's almost a nice, pleasant morning as you have mm -hmm. some, uh, some music. But other than that, you uh, spend some time getting your stuff together for the day, making uh, a small little breakfast for yourselves. And then Gilly's going to give the venom, anti-venom, to you, I guess. Oh, thank you. Can yeah, yeah, that. no problem. And then he's going to give, like, a... Sorry, no to Killian before he goes to the <laughs> dining. <laughs> uh, thanks, Gilly. Uh, excellent performance this morning, Killian. Ah, uh, thank you. Ooh, indeed. I was inspired by my heartbreak. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she plays yeah. like a, oh, a funeral uh, dirge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry to hear that, I suppose, but um, I have heard that bards are, their creativity is influenced by sadness, so perhaps that's what occurred. I think I'm sad. Oh, well, you mentioned heartbreak. I, I, I'm not certain. Is there anything you would like to share? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank Was you, it... though. All right. <laughs> uh, you finish up your breakfast and are uh, ready to head out for class. Yep. I'll uh, check the schedule and inform the party that we're meeting Professor Nightingale in the square. Well, we shouldn't keep Professor Nightingale waiting. All right. Thanks, Schedule Master. Yeah, Dad. <laughs> you yeah. Schedule really Dad. don't have to call me either of those names. Broke is fine. Okay, Schedule Dad. <laughs> yeah, Schedule Dad. Big Gilly is like laughing so hard. Uh. <laughs> Crook's uh, okay with Yo calling him names because he assumes that Yo is just forgetful and <laughs> doesn't realize that he doesn't want <laughs> yeah, to call him. think that's your real name. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, title. <laughs> right. Uh, so you head off to the um, to Sundial Square. Uh, I'll say that Esther goes with you because uh, she's already there, but we'll say that she comes with you. Um, and as you arrive in the square, uh, you can see Professor Nightingale, who's waiting with a, a couple other students. Uh, Croak will approach and salute uh, each person individually and say, uh, uh, Greetings, Sword Gang. It's good to see you here. Um, Godfrey kind of. Well, Professor. Godfrey uh, gives you a salute back. Um, Hina kind of waves at you. And. Um, the professor says, uh, hello, students. Uh, how are you feeling today, then? Feeling much better? We're well. Yeah. How are you? Oh, yeah, uh, how are you? You're in that hole with us. I'm, uh, I'm doing much better as well. I'm uh, glad that that whole ordeal is behind us. No kidding. That's some harsh detention. <laughs> well, I can assure you that isn't how detention is supposed to go. <laughs> Uh, typically, it's quite boring. Uh, we happen to have a uh, very unlucky circumstance there. But um, now that we're all here, uh, I guess we can begin. So, for a while now, I've been planning uh, a class um, after getting approval from the headmaster. And... Um, uh, now that we, uh, I seem to have figured it all out and all the logistics are in order and I've gathered the materials um, and, you know, all that, uh, it's time to finally put this into action. Now, this is a class that I haven't, I haven't done at the school before, you see. 
Um, so you'll be the first to experience it. Uh, I've been told from time to time from the other professors that uh, my lectures can be a little dry, so I thought I would do something a little more interesting, a little more hands-on, if you will. Uh, he looks over at you guys and goes, don't worry, there won't be any dungeons involved. Perk has a skeptical look under his visor, but it doesn't show. I assure you, uh, this class is entirely harmless. A skeptical look remains. <laughs> Will there be slime involved? Uh, not today, uh, unfortunately. Drax. Uh, now then. The spell that I was uh, working on is called uh, Awaken. And um, this isn't a spell that a person like myself would uh, typically typically utilize but um, for some time now it has uh, caught my interest uh, as far as the school of transmutation goes and I've been putting quite a bit of practice into it and I believe that I have mastered it now um, and the one of the more difficult parts was um, finding the ingredients for it uh, the components for this spell are a little bit hard to find and uh, they tend to be a little bit pricey, so finally, now that I've gathered them, um, he holds, he brings out a, a small little pouch out of his uh, side satchel, um, and then opens that pouch and empties a small stone into his hand and says, uh, "This is uh, agate, and for this spell, it is required." Now, the. The spell itself requires quite a bit of prep time, but I've begun the prep already, so we won't need to wait around much longer. Um, eight hours of prep time, in fact, uh, needs to be prepared within this uh, gemstone here. But now that it is nice and ready, I believe we are ready to test it out. Now, has anyone heard of this spell before? Uh, Croak shakes his head, no. Mm. Mm -mm. I, I didn't believe so. Uh, it's a, a rare one, mainly um, done performed by uh, druids, uh, hermits out in the, the wilderness. And you don't often see it um, by your standard city wizards and spellcasters. So I'm not surprised that nobody's heard of it before. Now, the concept behind this spell is that you take this gemstone and perform a ritual on either an animal or uh, a plant and awaken it, essentially, um, into a, a conscious and intelligent creature. Now, I believe it is uh, more simple for us to do it to a plant than have to deal with a, uh, a talking animal around here. So... Uh, we're going to be performing it on a plant today. Now, I've looked around campus and found some trees that it would work on, but uh, do any of you students have any trees that would be better? I do have a tree. Oh, really? Uh, whereabouts? Yeah, me. Oh, in, in, the, uh, in the shrine room for uh, Athar. Oh, oh in, uh, in the Athar shrine room. It didn't occur to me to look there, the actually. Yeah, yeah, I got one in there. Really? Uh, yeah. I suppose we could take a look at it then. Uh, that might be a good option. Awesome. Um, yeah. I, though I can't say I know too much about the worship of Athar. Uh, you are a follower of Athar, correct? Uh, you think that that would be all right? Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be fine. Very well. I'll uh, defer to your judgment then, as uh, we don't really have many druids around the school. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fine. Uh, very well, then. Uh, class, I suppose we should head on over there. Certainly, Professor. Uh, he begins to lead you towards the college, then. Kirk's uh, going to follow, but he's walking kind of slow, so Esther will catch up. Uh, Alright, she's following too, I just don't have... It's not going to drag everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. Um, so, for the sake of me not dragging everybody's portrait on here just for a couple seconds um professor nightingale leads you over to the worship room 
Um, and then you can see him kind of look at the doorknob and flip the dial to the leaf, and then he opens the door. All right, so let's go right there, rather than. All right, students, bit of a tight squeeze, but I believe we can all fit if we, if we try hard enough. I move myself. Davilius. I was cool enough to be on this page already. <laughs> Hina? Listen, if I RP'd my worship, I would permanently be here. <laughs> <laughs> this part should just never leave. Godfrey? Godfrey, you in there? Alright, that was good. And who's here? And Esther. Massive. All right, uh, so you head inside and um, you can see the tree that uh, Killian has planted uh, about here. Um, it is still uh, not a fully grown tree. Um, it doesn't quite even touch the ceiling yet. Um, but uh, it does seem to be quite healthy as she is watering it. Uh, so the rest of the class kind of piles into the room. Uh, he seeing that this is sort of like the largest tree in this room as the rest of it is mainly like vines and shrubs and flowers and stuff like that um, he says uh, is this the tree then Killian yeah it's that one uh, I believe this will do um, all right then I suppose uh, we can start the ritual then students Uh, Kirk places his hand on the hilt of his long sword just in case. <laughs> uh, Theophilius takes the uh, the gemstone, um, which you can see is sort of uh, glowing green now, um, and he places it against uh, the the trunk of the tree. And uh, as he kind of places it, you see him sort of push slightly with his hand, and the gemstone sort of. Uh, melds into the bark of the tree. Interesting. And after a couple seconds after it melds, you see um, the green light begin to uh, spread almost as if it's going through like veins in between the gaps in the bark. Um, you can see it spread all throughout the entire tree. Um, and it goes all the way up into the branches and you can see it sort of stop right at the leaves. Um, and then the green light then fades. And you wait a couple moments and kind of stare at this normal looking tree now as the green light fades. And then ever so slightly you see uh, around the center of the trunk at about um, maybe chest level for uh, an average human. Um, probably more closer to head height for Killian. Um, you see the bark begin to kind of groan and crack and form into a face. What? Oh, hello? The, uh, the face kind of uh, blinks. You can see sort of makeshift eyes formed out of the bark. And it... Uh, sort of stretches its face, um, looking in different directions and uh, opening sort of a makeshift mouth. Um, there's sort of moss around its mouth that forms almost a beard. And it uh, it then yawns and goes, <sighs> I feel as though I've slept for ages. Who are you? Uh, as it kind of looks around at the lot of you. Who are you? Uh, well, uh, I don't suppose I have a name. Hmm. It uh, only just occurred to me, to be honest. Um, Theophilius looks excited. He's stroking his beard and saying, 
Unbelievable, it really worked. Hmm. Crook still got his hand yeah. on his hilt. The, uh, the tree no kind of moves gently. You can see the branches moving um, almost as if there was wind, but there is no wind in here. Um, and the tree kind of scans the group of you and says, Well, uh, unfortunately, I don't have an introduction to give you, but who are all of you? Uh, well, I'm Yo. That's Yo. <laughs> That's I'm Julian. Killian. <laughs> I'm Gilly. Uh, I am Croak. Uh, the others introduce themselves as well. Uh, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, I suppose. I can't say that I've had much conversation in my days. Though, I suppose I am Rather young by tree standards. Yeah, I planted you like last week. You're like a month old. Ah, uh, well, that was you then, little one. Yeah, yeah. I, I planted you. You lived in my room for a, a month. And I suppose you were the one who was watering as well? I was, yeah, I watered you. Oh, and Miss Josephina watered you. Then I have the two of you to thank. Oh, I was no problem. I didn't want you dying. Well, I suppose that is a fate I would like to avoid as well. Yeah, that would be crappy. Um, he speaks kind of slowly with a deep voice uh, that almost sounds um, like the groaning of a tree in the wind. Um, and he says, Oh, then for what purpose, my friends, have you awakened me? We want, I, I mean, Professor here wanted to speak to a tree, I guess. Well, you are speaking to one. What's it like being a tree? Mm, peaceful, for the most part. I remember being a seed, but I was a seed for many years. Many mm. years planted you? Yes, uh, and then I remember being planted, although it is hazy. And I suppose that was you. Do you recall your time as a seed? Uh, vaguely. Um, it's mostly hazy memories of being uh, tiny and carried around. Uh... Killian told us that she acquired you from some maracas creatures. What is... Yeah, the maracas gave him Maraca. Them. That's what she said. I do not know what that is, really. Uh, she tried to explain it, but it was lost on me. Well, my memory is quite hazy, but I do remember some tiny creatures. At first I thought maybe that was you, but maybe not. He says, looking at Killian. Yeah, I picked you up from some maracas. They were pretty friendly and really adorable. Ah, I see. Well, I thank you for planting me so that I could grow into what you see now. You want to be my date to the festival? <laughs> <laughs> The what? <laughs> and, and Gilly's gonna pipe up, yeah, yeah, the Winter Festival, wouldn't you enjoy spending it with Killian? Just to chill, just, right? Uh, I'm afraid yeah, yeah, chill. I don't understand this word you say, festival. It's like a party, 
people bring food, I guess, water and soil and have a good time. Yeah. Well, the water and the soil part sounds nice, but uh, this party word is uh, a little foreign to us tree folk, I'm afraid. We just enjoy each other's company and have a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see. Do you know how to dance? Uh, I don't... Yeah, do you know how to dance? I don't understand the question. Don't worry. No, <laughs> me neither. Mm, I, perhaps if you stand within a strong breeze, it will come naturally. Yeah, yeah. Well, I will believe what you say, my friend. Um, so, uh, Theophilus, uh, kind of, as you talk to the tree and then kind of, um, run out of questions, I guess, for the tree, um, he explains the spell further, um, and says that, um, when you, uh, enchant the, uh, the gemstone that you use to awaken a creature, um, you can choose a language to, uh, imbue the gem with, and he chose common. Oh, okay. Um, and then he also explains that uh, um, the the target of the spell gains sentience, and that um, for the first thirty days of this spell, um, the creature is actually charmed by you, too. Oh. Um, and will be friendly towards you, and then after those thirty days, it. Um, chooses whether or not to remain friendly based on how it feels you, it was treated during that time period. Oh, okay. Um, so it is currently charmed. That's why it's calling everybody my friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, I got 30 days to impress a bar. <laughs> oh, Professor, speaking of gemstones, have you ever seen one like this? I show him the ruby. Hmm... I don't believe so. It uh, it seems outside of transmutation magic, at least. Um, it doesn't appear to be anything I've had experience with. Hmm. Another dead end. Thank you, anyway. Um, the tree from behind you all... Uh, Pipes up all of a sudden and says, uh, Well, actually, I had a request, if you will. Speak, tree. <laughs> now that I have awakened and gained the ability to communicate, I should wish to speak with my lord, if you would kindly send him to me. Who might your lord be? Well, of course I speak of Nisandil, the Ant Lord. Have you not uh, heard of him? Doesn't ring a bell. No. Really? Who? I've never met an ant. Like a E N T? Mm -hmm. Is that how you spell it? I can't believe you've never heard of the Ant Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way it's spelled. E N T. Yeah. I don't have no idea what that is. Uh, no. It's like a walking, talking tree person. Oh, uh, I have a magic card that has a walking, talking tree person on it. Uh, but I didn't know they were called Ant Lords. Well, they're just called ants, but sometimes they're called tree ants as well. Um, oh, okay. I thought you were saying ant, like A N T, ant lord. Lord of ants. I yeah, like a big bug. Nah, he was referring to. Uh, we bring them all to the school. <laughs> yeah. Nissan okay. Deal, the ant lord, is who he was talking about. How do we find your ant lord? 
Well, I presume that all would know of him. You you don't you don't know of him. Uh, no. Professor. Uh, he's kind of stroking his beard and saying, "Well, the studies of nature are not typically my field. Uh, this name doesn't ring a bell. Uh, perhaps Professor Hibiske would know more, but um." I think for now we should finish up our class. Uh, we don't have much time left anyway. Um, I tell oh. you what. Uh, well, I suppose you don't have a name. Um, should we happen to come across this Ant Lord, I suppose we can tell him that you're looking for him. Uh, Killian, perhaps you could give the tree a name? Oh crap! Uh, <laughs> Put on the spot. All right, it better be it better be a genius name. We're expecting one. Oh my one. god! Oh my I mean, god! I, uh, I got a I got a backup if you don't have one. Also, uh, if if uh if chat wants to suggest things, feel free. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh. I need to come up with a name. Hmm. <laughs> Is it? Is it genderless or is what is its gender? Um, it's a tree, but it does appear to have sort of a mossy beard. Um, so it resembles the masculine, but it's a tree, so not real gender. Uh, what about um? I'm I'm really bad at names. <laughs> Man, I am too, and I got the word anchor stuck in my head now. So I'm going anchor. <laughs> I don't know why. Valar? That's a place in... Uh, I think... <laughs> I'm looking at a wiki. I was going to suggest to call them loggers. <laughs> Log oh my god. Logger. That seems kind of racist. Yeah. Treebeard? <laughs> I don't think we can call that. <laughs> we can, we're gonna get DM Edge striked by the uh, oh. the ghost of JRL token. If we do that. Afro tree, Afro. <laughs> um. <laughs> nose beard, nose nose leaf. Billy anchors. Billy anchors. <laughs> Billy Anchors. That sounds like a singer. No. <laughs> it does. I like it. Billy Anchors. Yeah. No. Billy Anchors. <laughs> Should have never said Billy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is your fault. <laughs> yeah, I take full responsibility. <laughs> yeah, I'm all up for Billy Anchors. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a strange but acceptable name, Gillian. Yeah, I mean, I won't stop you. It's you. You're Thank you. I can't talk about names. Yo. <laughs> yeah, he does sound like a <laughs> someone who performed live in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's your choice, so if that's what you want. Billy Inkers. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we got Gilly, Killian, and Billy. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Surely all the Billy. Uh, it was a joke when I said it. Gosh. <laughs> it's too late, late now. Too late. I was trying to think of tree puns. You have sealed his fate. <laughs> Yeah, Charles Barkley. Ooh, I like that. Oh, I like that one too. Oh yeah. It's too late. It's Billy. Yeah, it's Billy or Barkley. <laughs> Barkley would be cute. Billy I'll let, I'll let Barkley. you. Uh, I'll let you change it if you want to change it. That's fine. Barkley. Billy Barkley. 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 Barkley should be his last name. I think. <laughs> yeah, he's got Billy three Barkley. names. Billy Anchors is one word. Billy Anchors Barkley. What about okay. Billy Barkley? Billy Barkley. Oh, oh I like it. Billy Barkley. Yeah, Billy Barkley. Okay. How's that? <laughs> Final answer, Billy Barkley. 
<laughs> okay. He landed on one in the end. Damn, we could have just named him oh, Woody damn, Allen. That's a good one, Steve. Yeah. I don't like Woody <laughs> Allen. We're just too slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good movies, weird dude. And he yeah. got married to his daughter. It's weird. Yeah. I'm not really into Damn. that. Damn. He was. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, Professor Ooh. Nightingale spends the rest of not too long, but um, a couple more minutes explaining the spell. Um, what sort of criteria the, the creature or plant that you're going to cast it on needs to meet before you are able to cast it on them. Um, but, uh, yeah, with fourth wall break, it's, um, basically applicable on, um, things with no intelligence or an intelligence of score of less than three. Um, and then it gives them an intelligence of 10. Damn, that's so smart Wait. than me. <laughs> that's all I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Feels dumb, man. <laughs> yeah. We gotta fight something that lowers Yo's intelligence permanently so we can awaken him <laughs> and make him just naturally <laughs> smarter than he used to be. Oh, be awesome. oh my god. <laughs> uh, and then it, it gains like um, a language that you choose and then senses similar to humans. So he can, uh, he can hear you, he can talk, he can look around, he can move his branches. Uh, but other than that, uh, uh, no, go ahead. Uh, Billy, are you fine staying in these? And Croak will just kind of look around. Accommodations for now. Uh, it does seem comfortable for the moment. Hmm. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's all I had. <laughs> Besides finding your uh, int lord, is there anything else we can do for you in the meantime? Uh, I believe as long as I have adequate water, I should be alright. I'm sure Killian wouldn't mind taking care of that. Oh yeah, I'll do anything for my date to the floor. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm not a... Uh, uh, I don't grow that type of fruit, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's very disappointed. <laughs> Feeling rejected now. Good fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that, this class is ended, and you can feel free to disperse. Take care, I'm so sad about the Christmas stuff. <laughs> yeah. Being spoiled. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's Christmas cheer. Let me put some Christmas music on. And then you took it away from me. <laughs> it's not like you won't get it eventually. <laughs> yeah. Just think of it as like a little preview. Get you. In I want to introduce Billy Barkley to the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Killian wasn't actually going to bring him. She has an idea who she wants to take. Oh, you're going to let Billy down like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that, I that, mean, I'll come visit that Billy, Billy even understands what you even asked him to do. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's literally maybe a month old. Yeah. Um, like, he accepted just because he's friendly towards you guys, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that you have the impression that he fully understands <laughs> what exactly he got himself into. <laughs> Much like every yeah. other person that in interacts with our party. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, now I have an actual reason to come in here and play my bagpipes. Hell yeah. And I could just... <laughs> how he views me will depend on my performance for the next month. Oh, 
<laughs> well, like he's he's charmed by you, right? So like even if you play like poorly, he'll be like, "Good job, Killian. Great work." <laughs> but once the charm runs off, he'll be like, "Oh my god, that bitch." <laughs> Torture. <laughs> <laughs> So you make your way kind of back out of the uh, the worship room. God, it's crowded. <laughs> mm, so, do we have any other classes today? I'll check my schedule. Uh, you have a lecture in the afternoon. Okay. Mm, so it's like about lunchtime. Yeah, he uh, ended his class. Uh, you spent some time talking to the tree, and so the class was around an hour, and then it's over. Once he was satisfied that you understood the spell, he dismissed you. So it's lunchtime. Okay. Uh, what do you guys have planned? Um, no. you never has a plan. No, you don't need uh, to. Have, you don't need to have plans if you can't think of anything. Don't worry about that. There's no pressure to constantly come up with interesting things. Oh, I want. I'm gonna talk to Killian and see who she wants to ask, because that's important. Oh, Find okay. dates. <laughs> Did you answer earlier? Hmm. I thought you answered earlier, Killian. Amelia or Godfrey? Oh, yeah. Uh, Amelia, my first choice. Godfrey will be my backup if he doesn't have a date, but I'm sure he does. Hey, Godfrey, do you have a date to the festival yet? Um, he, he was talking to this little group here, and he kind of looks up startled uh, at your sudden question. He goes, uh, no, no, not yet. Okay, can you keep it like that for, like, one day at least? Uh. I guess so. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, yeah, he's my backup. <laughs> okay, cool. Jeez. Should we go ask <laughs> Amelia? Hmm. I could always ask her at dinner. Nah, or should I do it now? Um. <laughs> Is she on lunch? We, where would we find her? Library. Yes. To the library! <laughs> Um, it's been a while since we've been there. Let me take a look at it. Probably <laughs> some stuff needs to get moved around up there. Can uh, Kroko go to the library as well? He'll kind of uh, salute Sword Gang on his way up. <laughs> um, yeah, they uh, they do their their uh, greetings and they seem to be heading back in the direction of the dorms to eat lunch. Mm, let me get the rest of you up here. In the library. Uh, I guess you guys can watch me do it if you really want to. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you make your way. Um, where is she? Here we go. She would probably be here. Make your way upstairs. Um, off to the right of the the uh, main hall and uh, find yourself in the, the upper halls where the teachers have their offices and the library is located. Sorry, you got like first kill blurry. it. Is it not loading in? All the characters are fine. The background's just blurry, but it's fine. Mm. Happens sometimes. Like... Yeah. Uh, the doors aren't locked, so you can walk right into the library. Amelia? Why don't you telepathically ask her so she doesn't feel embarrassed? Oh, I'm not attuned to the hat yet. Um, oh, it, it, ha it has been a day, and you guys weren't doing a whole lot, so I can say that if you wanted to attune to it, you can. It's not a big enough of a deal for me to 
It's not like you guys are like right in the middle of some <laughs> climax where taking an hour would waste a lot of time. So I can say that maybe before you went to bed last night, you did it or something like that. Okay. It's not well, so it vital. What Kelly gave me. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kaylian's going to stand next to her and look at her with a really smug look and send her a message telepathically. Uh, she kind of stares at you because you just walk right up to her and start looking at her. And she just was like, as you walk up to her, she's like, oh, hello. And then just waits for you to respond. <laughs> and then I telepathically say to her, want to go to the festival with me? Um, so you see sort of like surprise in her eyes as um, you sort of like tug at the edges of her brain for her to let you in. Um not quite understanding what it is, um, but not sensing any hostility. She she doesn't shut you out, and here's what you say. Um, and uh, then she says, uh, what, what was that? Oh, I found this pretty cool hat. Well, I took it. Uh... <laughs> was that in, in my head? That was that was weird. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, right. Uh, the 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 question that you asked me also. Um, she starts to kind of turn red. And she says, I, "I'm really sorry, but actually, there's there's some somebody else that I like." Uh, she, she kind of quiets down. <laughs> okay, Killian's gonna send another telepathic message asking if it's windy. Windermere? No, no, they, they they don't go to this school. God dang it. Well, on to Godfrey. I'm kidding. <laughs> Aw, well, are you going to invite them? Mm, uh, I'm really good at writing letters if you need help with that. I, I don't really think it's it's possible. No? N no. Aww. Do you want to send them a letter still? Um... Again, I don't think it's possible. Oh. Why? It's it's a long story and not not really one that I'm uh, privy to tell you, to be honest. Wait. So they, just so it's clear, they're not able to come, but she doesn't want to go to the festival. Um, yeah, she doesn't want a different date, is what she's implying. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, I hope you still go, Amelia, and I hope to see you there. Um, yeah, I, I still plan to go, just not with a, a date, I'm sorry. Okay, don't worry, that's fine, that's fine. Anyway, catch you later, Amelia. All right, all right. Uh, enjoy your lunch. Bye, you too. Well, crap. Uh, I'd say. On to oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> you always just pretending to read a book. It's upside down. Um, I guess yeah. while that was happening, uh, Croak's gonna ask Silence, um, if she knows where he can find. Oh, I'll just ask him character. Um, excuse me, Silence, uh, do you know of any tomes or books that have information on, uh, scribing? Mm, uh, scribing. specifically scribing magic spells into scrolls. Mm, spell scribing, yeah, that, I believe there's a section somewhere, um, and she, uh, she pulls out kind of a, um, a leather bound book that she carries on her and um, begins to flip through it and then says, uh, yes, yeah, spell scribing. And then she walks, she kind of leads you over here and says, uh, this shelf should have uh, what you're looking for. Um, I believe there's several books of varying, uh, uh, for varying experience levels. There's beginner spell scribing, um, spell scribing for intermediates and the expert's guide to improving your spell scribing. 
Hmm. Much appreciated. Uh, Crook will kind of look them over and then gravitate towards the beginner's spell scribing book and uh, pull that off the shelf. Um, she says, uh, you can take that with you to the dorm if you'd like. Um, i just have you sign your name in the uh, register here. And she holds out that book. Um, she flips it to a page where there's some blank spots um, and begins to, with her quill, uh, write in uh, what book it is and then ask you to sign. Uh, certainly. And uh, he will sign um, his actual name. All right. Um, she says, I'd ask that you don't bring uh, school books off the grounds uh, just so I can keep track of them. Or near fire, killing calls from like across the room. Uh, certainly, I will keep this safe uh, within the school grounds. Uh, thank you. And I appreciate your assistance. Happy to help, that's my job. I'll give her a salute and depart. Find anything good there, yo. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Very interesting stuff here. Very interesting. <laughs> As he's holding the book upside mm. down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna insight check you, but uh, yeah, you're holding the book upside down. <laughs> I'm just not gonna say anything. <laughs> True friend. Mm, yes, it does appear to be an interesting... Uh, uh, whatever that's about. <laughs> I do have a D100 list of books. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's do, do it. it. Do What's it. yo reading? I did a campaign in the Cascades, which is a, a library monastery, so I did. I needed a, a list of books. Because <laughs> at any point during that campaign, they could literally walk to any wall and pick a book off of it. So <laughs> That's why this list um, yeah. was, was gathered together. So, yo, if you want to roll a D100, we can see what you picked up. Yeah, I meant to. I did an exclamation yeah, mark instead of a slash. <laughs> 11. 11, wow. <laughs> Actually, not bad. Um, it is uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Kingdom, a book about... Um, Seeing the kingdom on uh, less than 30 copper pieces a day. Oh, okay. We may actually need to read that. <laughs> yeah, not, not, not entirely unrelated to your character. You could be gravitated to that um, <laughs> quite well. That was genuinely 11 on the list. I, that was rolled completely randomly. <laughs> my intuition is strong, but my intelligence is poor. Exactly. I'll just say, uh, you'll be like, mm, the implications of this are devastating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, uh, I'll have to read on this later. We'll put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Upside <Yeah>. down. <laughs> mm. Well, it's good to see you taking uh, studies and interest in book learning as well yo always always gotta stay uh, educated it's my motto indeed <laughs> how'd things go with you Killian well I'm on to my third choice <laughs> uh, don't worry Killian you'll find a date I have faith in you Aw, oh, thanks, Croak. So, Indeed. I'm sure you'll have a great time with Esta. Uh, yes, I suppose. Um, well, since you and Gilly assisted Wait, me... Wait, he's and, four. Sorry. Uh, I would be happy to assist you as well. Um, if it, if you were looking for someone in particular, uh, perhaps I could put in a good word if I know them. <laughs> Maybe it will be somebody from Sword Gang. Oh, well, certainly I could put in a good word for you then. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Croak. I, I knew you had my back, buddy. She'll pat him on the back. I thought he already Indeed. agreed. 
Oh, no, I told him to wait. Um. <laughs> you just literally, literally told him, don't accept any dates for one day. <laughs> okay, so I and asked... exhaust all my other options. <laughs> there was Croak. <laughs> yeah. Then there was Gillian. Then there was Amelia. And now there's Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> Poor God. <laughs> Don't worry. Somebody has to say yes eventually. He was going stag or whatever the turtle version of that is. <laughs> Aww. Gotta find someone. Yeah, ask Wendy. Turtles ain't like that, bro. He was right. <gasps> Ask uh, what's what's the big turtle's name? <laughs> Sheldor. Shalavander. Oh yeah. Shalavander. <laughs> ask Shalavander. <laughs> Go find no, Shalavander. Uh, he's a little preoccupied at the moment. He'd probably destroy wherever the dance is too. Trying to get in. He would. Which, I mean, that would be cool to see too, but. <laughs> then you gotta wait a year for the school to be repaired before you can go back to class. <laughs> True. Which I'm sure would make for very exciting art, but. <laughs> Collect repair supplies for the school. <laughs> yeah, it's just fetch quests. <laughs> Gather 10 logs. It just becomes like an MMO. <laughs> oh, yes, I need a new one to play. <laughs> Honestly. We show up for like 20 minutes every day working on it. Build, our rep, build yeah. rep with the magic college. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do your dailies. <laughs> uh, hey, Godfrey. I'm back. Um, yeah, did, so, yeah? Do you need something? Oh, uh, you want to be my date to the festival? Uh, um, Crunkle just before Godfrey even says anything. Uh, Gillian is a very good girl. She's very interesting and funny and charming, and he just Gee, like thanks, keeps, Dad. He keeps going on and listing like all these things <laughs> like, like a dad would of his proud, like, proud of his daughter. Um, yeah. Godfrey kind of chuckles as Croak kind of lists off off, and he goes, "Well, I mean, I don't have a date, but um, why'd you tell me to wait earlier?" Um, don't worry about it. I just wasn't ready to ask you right away. I was a little nervous. Deception check. Ooh. Oh, no. Hold on. Five! All right, Godfrey <laughs> rolled a 17 for his insight, so... Um, I won't I say I won't say that he doesn't know exactly what you were doing, but he's a little wary of you now. He kind of squints his eyes. And, and doesn't necessarily believe that you were um, what you said. Well, have a great time, Godfrey. Oh, you're not interested anymore, then? What? Oh, oh, no, I thought you said, well, have a great time, but you said, we'll have a great time. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Um, he says, uh, I suppose so. Yeah, it'll, it'll be great. Um, <laughs> he seems like he's kind of humming it over. He's not, he's not quite sure. Do, do you want some time to think about it? We we could talk about it later. Yeah. I'll come by and see you after dinner. Sure. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too. <laughs> Killing's never going to get a date. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hina, if you do not have a date as well, uh, my friend Yo over there, and he'll kind of point at Yo and like give him a thumbs up, uh, is also without a date. Uh, well, it is true he that is, I do uh, not have a date. Ah, well, he is, uh, very strong and... Uh, charming, and <laughs> he just like goes through the whole list. <laughs> uh, stuff he's proud of. Um, uh, I'm I'm good. <laughs> he he wow. doesn't he does not seem particularly interested, right. Crow. Hmm. Well, my apologies, Hina. I just thought you two might make a good pair. It's not you. It's me. 
I understand. <laughs> yeah, it was very embarrassing. Half of this session has just been me reading the side chat. The side chat is very entertaining. It makes me really happy that I, I did make that little side uh, box for the audience to read too. Because <laughs> I'd hate for them to have missed all that. <laughs> Thanks, Croak. Sorry, Yo. Uh, sorry for putting you on the spot there. I just thought it might help. After I just said I was going away. Uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> what if he's. <gasps> what about Sophia? Oh, yeah. Sophia? Sophia? Sophia, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm terrible at names, y'all. <laughs> ask, uh, ask, ask her to want to play an instrument with you. It was the. Uh, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. Uh, Wait, card. I'll go meet her out by the Avery and see if she's there. We'll ha and I'll ask her. Oh, it's gonna be cute. Yes, I will be there in spirit around the corner. <laughs> she's just talking about her next plan right in front of Godfrey. <laughs> well, he rejected her, so fuck it. Wait, no, he didn't. He said he'll think oh, about he, it. He did say he would he'll think, think about, about it. it? That's too long. <laughs> What's there to think about? <laughs> Look at how cute her portrait. Can you make her portrait bigger, Killian's? <laughs> yeah, look at how cute she is. <laughs> How could you say no to that? I mean, he probably would have said yes had she just outright asked him, but uh, she kind of went about it in a pretty roundabout way that turned him off. It's like Mean Girls. <laughs> I think oh. Sophia would be cuter anyways. <laughs> he says that to Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Sennon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kirk, like, shields his visor with one hand from Godfrey's side and kind of whispers to Killian, uh, So what's the plan, Killian? <laughs> I'm still working on it. I... Uh... Huh. Godfrey, go. you're my number one choice. <laughs> Deception check. <laughs> Uh, he he's not gonna believe you much at regardless, but do one more thing. What'd you get? I rolled a nat twenty. Nat mm. twenty. He's gotta say yes. Uh, I don't think he has to say yes. I think he's already wary of you. Um, but um, I think <laughs> really in regards to that, um, he doesn't think less of you for this. Okay. Uh, you okay. haven't damaged your reputation, but that doesn't mean he's just gonna instantly go with you. Okay, I gotta work for it. Okay, I could. In do other that. words, yeah, you weren't you weren't caught in though. another lie, so you haven't damaged your reputation with him. Gotta put in work, girl. I I could do that. I could do that. I'll see you later, Godfrey. Uh, tonight, wink. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Oh. Christ. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> Yeah, we need to. <laughs> uh, should we head to our next class, guys? <laughs> As she's per perpetually licking her lips. <laughs> blink, blink, slurp, slurp, skeet, skeet. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Kuroka is just walking away with his face in his palm. Uh, yeah, apologies, yeah. sword gang. So sorry again. Um, I forgot her name. Ina. Gilly is gonna sword talk girl. to Croak. I'll, I'll say that in character. Sword girl. Sorry, sword girl. Sword girl. Croak, where did you learn to pick up chicks? I never did, Gilly. <laughs> I never did. That was not smooth at all. Yeah, you're gonna have Indeed, to I agree. It was like watching a train wreck. I couldn't look away. We're gonna need better. What's a train? 
Julie's mom. Um, yeah. Oh, please. He's 25 and has Elden pure thing? thoughts. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's, he's just he's just an army boy. He's yeah, they were probably. I don't believe it. Well, okay, not compared to like today's military. No, back then. Like it. Mm. I'm pretty sure they were hooking up with people. Croak is an yeah, individual. Probably. But not him. I guess Cro okay. <laughs> Croak's too awkward anyway. Like, I mean, even if he tried, he would have failed. So uh, he, he's pretty much relying on Jillian Killian to like give him tips at this point, which, you know, <laughs> speaks volumes for his state. The whole can't take off your armor thing, too, probably put the damper on a lot of. <laughs> oh, that's. Yeah. I'm sure he would pull up his visor for Esta. Yes, a blacksmith. Yeah, his visor for Esta. Huh? You don't think so? Mm. Mm. Depending on the circumstance. I would say <laughs> most circumstances, no. If she was like, oh, can we have a kiss at the end of the dance? You wouldn't be like, oh, let me pull up my visor. <laughs> okay, first of all, Essa wouldn't do or say something like that straight up. <laughs> Second of all, he would offer like his visor, like cheek, and just kind of lean in, probably. <laughs> oh my That's god! Cute. That's so <laughs> weird! <laughs> so don't judge, Gilly. Yeah, no kink shaming. Huh? It's why he wears all the time. It's his kink. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's not canon. <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as your afternoon, your class is um, a standard lecture again. Okay. Um... And uh, I would say we could move on to the evening, but uh, I think we're pushing up against the time frame. Um, no problem. I went a little longer because we had some technical difficulties, but uh, I think yeah. we should probably call it for today. Pick up. Yeah, uh, I'm happy with that. In the evening. How are you, though, Killian? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Killian will get a date. Eventually, hopefully, yeah. she's gonna be the person to, like go with the chaperone. <laughs> no, so like, Gilly know. will help Killian get a date. Just, it's just really Purple unfortunate. It's just really oh. unfortunate he thinks not with his head when he's around. I'm going through nice the people. list of characters. <laughs> I'm not right. <laughs> Sophia. Yeah, this is the like, part of the campaign yeah. where a class of crows turns into a dating simulator. <laughs> <laughs> You've all been waiting for it. You don't, huh? If you don't have enough points for the character, they reject you when you ask them out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unironically, you, yeah, that was sort of a background thing I was doing. I was keeping track of your relationships with each person. Wait, then how did, how did, did she just say yes, Lockney? Um, because A, you yeah, didn't blow it when you asked her, um, which is a factor. Uh, <laughs> if you were rude to them or something when you asked them, then that would be one factor where they would reject you. Um, and then another factor was, do they have somebody else they're interested in? She did not. Um, and then the final factor is, um, do they seem like they would get along with you? And she did. They like drugs. Uh, so I you, get it. you checked all three boxes, and that's why she said yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, sorry, Killian. I was thinking with my not brain. I like how the, d the description of Venice is a boy who attempted to bully our party. <laughs> attempted, yeah. I put attempted because they really <laughs> failed pretty badly, <clears throat> didn't they? Yeah. Oh, what about the elf boy? Nah, I cut him once. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that wouldn't work. I mean, I didn't punch Venice. Yeah. I wasn't even there. There's a couple people probably missing from your journal. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll add the ones that are currently there, but there's a couple that don't have actual character sheets because I just dragged their <laughs> portrait on so that because I'm lazy. Um, but I'll, I'll. I don't remember. Oh, Gareth is one of those emo boys that was in the uh, fight at the original, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. No, oh, no. I forgot about Albira. I would have asked her to. I'm going by how appealing their portraits are. <laughs> so shallow. Huh? Really. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> He he is shallow, so you're not really saying anything that's not true. Yeah, it's good good role play. Oh, the guards! Could she ask one of the guards? Ask Tom. You'd ask Tom. Yeah. Oh my God, Tom! Killing would totally take Tom. Oh yeah, he would have asked Ten Winden too. Maybe he might be a little old for you though, Tom. Maybe. Mm. You can always have multiple dates, Gilly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's gonna do the sitcom thing where you take two people and then don't tell them about each other. So throughout no, the night, he... you just have to switch back and forth between them. No, that's way oh, too God. much to keep track of, and Gilly's not that smart. Man, <clears throat> Senan, Killian doesn't have that sort of stuff, but Gilly might. What? <laughs> he said, uh, should have drug Godfrey before. Oh. Oh, I could. I mean, he'd have to. He would know he's eating something. <laughs> I don't know if I feel <laughs> that good about drugging someone. Yeah. Good. I was I mean... worried about you drugging us. Uh? I thought you were for sure going to drug us eventually. No. Awesome. It's not. It's not fun getting high with people who don't want to get high with you. You have experience. No. Nope. <laughs> no experience, but that's yeah. what I'm guessing, and that's what I've read too. So. Mm. She's researched getting high. Yeah. Alright, uh, so next session we'll pick up on that evening after class. Um, and you can do what you'd like to do. Is that a Monday, technically? Um, no, it, we did another day, right? So it's Tuesday. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about the first class. That's how quickly Yo forgets. Uh, it's fine, it's because I'm skipping two days. <laughs> Um, and then tree names. All right, got everything. I got got my bookkeeping done. Will Killian find a date? Find out next find time. Out next on time. A class of crows. <laughs> or not? Because <laughs> she might not. <laughs> Pepe hands. There's a lot of students. There's got to be somebody, right? Yeah, eventually. <laughs> I think you'd match. Yeah, she'll find somebody. Yeah, yeah Sophia's yeah. probably a sh <sighs> uh, Bit of a messy session because <laughs> all she does is eat hot chip and lie. <laughs> uh, this turned into a dating sim <laughs> today. <laughs> That's fine, it was enjoyable. Except apparently Gilly is the only one who's smooth enough to not need assistance to get a date. Just drugs. <laughs> huh? Just drugs. Hey, she wasn't high when I when I asked, okay? True. 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 True so yeah. yeah. 
Man, you guys are trying to zone a truth me to like make me <laughs> confess. What the? What was oh. that? We should have asked you why you what? want to take off your armor. Too late now. You want to? Well, I mean, <laughs> I think. Has he? Wait, if we asked what your actual name was, would you tell us? If it was within the circle of truth, well, you can choose not to answer. So yeah, you can just. I don't know. Say he might you tell don't... you, but. Yeah, yeah, he'd, he'd okay. probably say nothing, like, because that's not what he goes by to anyone other than his family and all. Oh, it's like his dead name. Yeah. Name themselves Croak. I'm kidding. I mean, like, he put it on, uh, he puts on, like, official school papers and stuff like that, but that's it. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't ask any rude questions anyway. I forgot. This is not a filthy bandit. <laughs> Bit of a <laughs> disjointed session what with our technical difficulties in the middle. Um, but I'm glad that things ended up working out. Oh, that's fun. Like always, it's fun. Hell yeah. Oh, now you have to take a picture. Go to your bathroom. Take um, a mirror picture. Oh yeah, I gotta take a picture of the... Uh... Shirt. <laughs> Dungeons and Cats oh, you got, shirt. You got the shirt. Carolyn got or, uh, Yeah, Carolyn yeah. Got. And he his mom got it. <laughs> Dude, she she uh addressed it to um no, I'm not gonna say my full name on stream, but she called me mm -hmm. Sir in it. Like Sir Sir Luno. Type. Yeah, Sir Luno. Bling blank. <laughs> <sighs> And he, cause, it, cause, um, Croak was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get the mail, so my mom's not gonna see it." And then his mom saw it. Oh, she made fun of me. Aww. <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to it. Every time Gilly sends me a Christmas card, I'm used to it because it's usually dressed to Luna. So. Yeah. She she does it on purpose. My mom appreciates it. She gets a good laugh out of it. It's just all at my expense. I know. I think the name I put on the Christmas card this year makes absolutely no sense for you. I wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah. And then I... On um, Yo's, I put Unicorn Crusher or something. What? <laughs> Why not? I don't know. Because of the I song. Know. You mean the band? Yeah. Gotcha. Crusher, you said? Unicorn? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, th I actually don't remember what I put on it. Crushing unicorns, bro. Yeah. All right, but anyways, so, um, yeah. So Twitch chat, um, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. Uh, apologies for the technical difficulties in the middle there, but um, eventually we got them figured out. I'm gonna have to go watch the um, figure out which fods to keep versus which ones to throw away, because <laughs> uh, there's some ones there that are just like 30 seconds long. So, uh, but thank you for sticking around through that. Those who did. Um, if you're watching the VOD, uh, apologies for the disjointed little way that you have to watch this, but it is what it is. Um, still very mad about that reveal that Roll20 pulled on me. <laughs> that um, was so weird. <laughs> but, uh, you took Christmas away from me. <laughs> you weren't supposed to have it in the first place. <laughs> you don't get to open your oh, Christmas like, gifts right. before Christmas. Dude, I do. I'm terrible. I send people Christmas gifts in November. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I stole Christmas. Um, but uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, chat, uh, erase that from your mind. It didn't happen. You never saw any of that. Be surprised when it happens later. All right? Save your pog champs. Um. <laughs> but uh, other than that thank you for watching the next session will be uh hearth and Home on tuesday at 7 p.m eastern uh, for them to get into that 
fight, I suppose, uh, in which they've sort of set themselves up in a rather unfortunate circumstance. Uh, so we'll see how that resolves for them on Tuesday. The old rumble at the lumber mill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with uh, only half the party currently. <laughs> should be fine um yeah so we'll see uh what the uh what that ends up being but thank you for watching thank you for sticking around during the technical difficulties thank you for navigating the annoying bods and have a good night mm-hmm.